Welcome to the Alaska Migrant Education Program video training series. This video takes a closer look at the different sections of the Certificate of Eligibility, or COE, which is the form used to document a child's eligibility in the program. Under the Migrant Education Program, or MEP, every migratory child's eligibility must be documented on the National Certificate of Eligibility, or COE. The COE is created by the U.S. Department of Education and serves as the official record for the state's eligibility determination for each individual child. A child must have an SEA approved COE before MEP services may be provided. The COE is available for completion in several formats, printed hard copy, billable PDF, and online entry through the Alaska Migrant Web System. In this video, we'll just be going through the different sections and fields of the COE. A separate video will discuss how to create a COE through the web system. Districts fill out a COE when they believe they have identified a child who is potentially eligible for the program. The COE contains the information needed to certify a child as migrant eligible. Let's look at this sample filled out COE. This COE is for siblings Jason and Jane, who went gillnetting for salmon with their parents from 7520 to 71220. They went from their home in Wasilla and crossed school district boundaries to fish in Dillingham. This move was for personal subsistence. As we walk through the COE, we will take a closer look at each section of this sample COE. The COE is divided into eight sections. The top of the COE, child data, family data, qualifying moves and work, additional qualifying moves, comment section, interviewee signature, and eligibility data certification. We will first discuss the top of the COE. The top of the COE is the header section. It identifies the form as the Certificate of Eligibility for the State of Alaska. The current school year is displayed in the upper right corner of the COE. Make sure that you are entering the COE for the correct school year. The COE ID is an auto-generated number created by MIS 2000. For COEs created in the web system, this field does not appear when you are entering the COE, but will be displayed once you view the COE in PDF format. For COEs not created in the web system, such as COEs completed in the fillable PDF form, this number is generated once the COE is entered into MIS 2000. Records managers are responsible for filling out this field on the hard copy COE if it is not already included. The school district name is the name of the school district recruiting the child. If creating the COE in the web system, this field will be auto-populated for you. The residency date is the date that the family establishes or re-establishes residency in the recruiter's district. Record the date that the children moved to or arrived in the recruiter's school district after the most recent qualifying move using two digit numbers that refer to the month and day and the last two digits of the year. For COEs that are created in the web system, this date can be entered using the calendar function. For this sample COE, the interviewee is recruiting for the Matsu School District during the 2020-2021 school year. The residency date is 7-12-20, or the date the children established or reestablished residency in the school district. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the child data section. The child data section contains all information on the eligible children in the household who made the same qualifying move. All eligible children in the family who made the qualifying move are listed from youngest to oldest, with the youngest child at the top of the list. This list includes children whose ages are from birth up to age 20, or up to 22 with an active IEP on file with the district. Only children who made the same move with the same worker should be listed on one COE. If some of the children in the family made qualifying moves to other locations or on different dates or with different workers, they should be listed on separate COE. Student ID refers to the child's Alaska Student Identification Number or AKS ID. 
If a child is enrolled in a public school, the records manager can obtain the child's Alaska student ID from the district registrar. For children who have never been enrolled in an Alaska public school, MIS 2000 will generate a placeholder number. The next five columns are fields for the child's legal name. Last name one is the legal last name of each eligible child in the family. Last name two is the second last name if the child has multiple names or a hyphenated last name. If the child has more than two last names, the entire name should be recorded in the correct order in the comments section of the COE. First name is the legal first name of each eligible child. Do not record nicknames or shortened names. Middle name is the legal middle name or secondary name of each eligible child. It is possible to fit multiple middle names in the middle name field in the web system. But if there is insufficient space, only list the child's first middle name in the middle name field and include all middle names in the comment section of the COE. Suffixes for recording the child's generation in the family, for example, junior or the third. The birth date column is to record the month, day, and year the child was born. Use the two digit number that refers to the month and day and the last two digits of the year. For example, July 22, 2018 would be written as 07 slash 22 slash 18. The next column, sex, is for the child's gender. Record M for male and F for female. The code MB stands for multiple birth flag. Use code Y for yes if the child was part of a multiple birth, such as a twin or triplet. Use N for no if the child was a single birth. The next column, EB, is for the child's ethnic breakdown according to the parent or guardian. Codes are listed in the recruiter handbook for your reference. Recruiters who are entering COEs through the web system will find that these codes appear through a drop-down list. Next is the column for birth date verification code. This is a four-digit code that corresponds to the evidence used to confirm the child's date of birth. Recruiters who are relying on the interviewee's verbal statement can use 1007 for parents' affidavit. Codes are listed in the recruiter handbook for your reference. Recruiters who are entering COEs through the web system will find that these codes appear through the drop-down list. School name is where the child is enrolled in school. All children will have information recorded in this field. The most common way of filling out this field is to provide the name of the child's school if the child is enrolled in a public school in the recruiter's district. Children who are not enrolled in any school would have the name of the recruiter's district in this field. The recruiter handbook contains more detailed information on how to complete this field. Enroll date is the first day of school that the child attends after the most recent qualifying move. The enroll date must be the same as or after the residency date. All children will have an enroll date with two exceptions. One, children who are too young to be enrolled in school, such as babies, and two, children who have dropped out of school. Grade is the child's current grade at the time the COE is completed. A grade must be listed for every child who is enrolled in a school program, whether it is a home school, private school, or a public school. Children attending preschool programs will have PS reported for their grade. Children not attending any school are listed as grade zero, zero. Children who were in school at some point but are no longer attending are listed as grade OY for out of school youth. The last two columns are the immunization records flag or IM and medical alert indicator or MA. The recruiter creating the COE is not responsible for filling out these fields. The information in these fields will come from the district and is the responsibility of the records manager to obtain. The records manager could potentially find this information in the district's student information system or in the child's cumulative file. The IM field records whether the district has immunization records on file for each child listed on the COE. This field does not indicate whether the child is immunized 
or which immunizations the child has received. This field only indicates that the district has the child's immunization records on file. The migrant program is not required to obtain copies of the child's immunization records. The MA field records if the migratory child has a chronic health condition, acute health condition, or if they do not have any health condition. Specific medical conditions do not need to be recorded on the COE, nor is it necessary for the district MEP to keep specific documentation regarding any such conditions on file outside of the information required in the medical alert field. There are two children in this sample COE, and they are listed from youngest to oldest. Putting both children on the same COE means that they made the same qualifying move with the same migratory worker. Jason John Jackson Jr.'s parent confirmed he was born on 7-22-18. Jason is not yet enrolled in school. Jane Marie Jackson's parent confirmed that she was born on 4-25-10. Jane's first day of school after her most recent qualifying move was 8-13-20. She is in fifth grade. Neither child was part of a multiple birth and both children are Alaska Native. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the family data section. The family data section records the contact information for the children's primary household. Parent slash guardian one is the name of the individual, if any, currently responsible for the children. Parent slash guardian two is the name of the second individual, if any, currently responsible for the children. Their legal names must be listed in order of last name, then first name. The term parent slash guardian on the COE can mean a legal guardian or other person who is standing in place of the parent, including a grandparent or step parent with whom the children live. Current address is the main physical address, including the street, city, state, and zip code for where the children currently reside. In cases where a formal physical address is not available, include as much other identifying information as possible. Post office boxes are not considered current addresses. Telephone is a 10 digit telephone number, including area code for the family. If the family does not have a telephone number, record a phone number where a message can be left. However, this cannot be a school or district number. By signing the COE, the parent slash guardian agrees to be contacted by the Migrant Education Office as part of a federal requirement to review random COEs. The mailing address can be a PO box or street address. If the mailing address is the same as the current physical address, recruiters can write same in this field. Email is an optional field used to record the parent slash guardian's email address. In this sample COE, there are two individuals listed as the children's parents in the primary household. Their physical and mailing addresses are provided, as well as a phone number and email address. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the Qualifying Moves and Work section. The Qualifying Moves and Work section documents the child's eligibility for the program. It records the qualifying moves and qualifying work information that makes a child eligible. No mistakes may be made in the section. Crossouts, whiteout, or correction tape is not permitted. When completing the qualifying moves and work section, it is important for the recruiter to understand that this section is where they establish both the migratory children and qualifying worker. Questions one through three in this section document the children's qualifying move with the qualifying worker. Questions four through six document the move and work that establishes an individual as a qualifying worker. Question one reads, the children listed on this form move due to economic necessity from a residence in blank fields follow to a residence in blank fields follow. It is the responsibility of the recruiter to verify that all moves described on the COE were made due to economic necessity. The child and the worker, if the child is not the worker, move because they could not afford to stay in the current location. From a residence in is the child's last place of residency 
immediately prior to the qualifying move. Provide the school district, city, state abbreviation, and country abbreviation from which the child traveled. To a residence in refers to the location where the child resided immediately following the qualifying move as the worker with or to join the worker. A qualifying move can never be made to a country outside the United States. Provide the school district, city, and state abbreviation of where the child traveled to. The child and migratory worker must have crossed school district boundaries or in districts of more than 15,000 square miles, they can cross school district boundaries or travel 20 miles or more one way to a temporary residence. For moves within a school district of greater than 15,000 square miles, a map with a scale for determining distance must be attached to the COE. The interviewee will verify the route traveled on the map to ensure the validity of the migratory move. Question two establishes how the child made the qualifying move listed in question one, whether that move was as with or to join a parent, guardian, or spouse. It reads, the children moved followed by instructions in parentheses to complete both A and B. Question 2A asks the recruiter to choose between three checkboxes, as the worker, with the worker, or to join or precede the worker. Mark the box as the worker if the child moved as the worker. A child must be at least 14 years old to be considered a worker. Mark the box with the worker if the child moved with or at the same time as the worker. Mark the box to join or precede the worker if the child moved either before or after the date the worker moved. If this box is marked, also complete I under 2B. For moves where the child and the worker move separately, you must record the date that the child moved, record the date that the worker moved, and record the reason for the different move dates. Note that if they move separately, the child's move should occur within 12 months of the worker's move. Question 2B reads, the worker, followed by a blank field for the worker's name, is, and here another selection must be made between the child the child's parent or guardian, or the child's spouse. Record the first and last name in that order of the individual who is the migratory agricultural worker or migratory fisher. Mark the box that indicates whether the migratory worker is the child or is the child's parent, guardian, or spouse. Question 2BI should only be completed if to join or proceed was checked in question 2A. Question 2BI reads, the children moved on, followed by a blank field for the children's move date. The worker moved on, followed by a blank field for the worker's move date, followed by instructions to provide a comment in the comment section of the COE. Record the date that the children moved to the school district listed in question one. Record the date the worker moved to the school district listed in question one. In the comments section of the COE, record the reason for the different move dates and whether the worker moved from a different location than the children. Question three reads, the qualifying arrival date was, followed by a blank field. The qualifying arrival date, or QAD, is the date that both the child and worker completed the qualifying move due to economic necessity to the school district listed in question one. The QAD is the date that the child's eligibility for the migrant education program begins. Record the qualifying arrival date using two digit numbers to refer to the month and day in the last two digits of the year. When determining the qualifying arrival date or QAD, it is important to remember that the QAD is the date that both the worker and the child complete their move to the school district listed in question one. If a child moved with the worker, the QAD is the date they both arrived in the school district listed in question one. If the child moved before the worker, the QAD is the date the worker arrived in the school district listed in question one. If the worker moved before the child, then the QAD is the date the child arrived in the school district listed in question one. There is a distinction between a qualifying move and a qualifying arrival date. 
A qualifying move is a move within the previous 36 months due to economic necessity from one residence to another, from one school district to another, with an exception for districts with an area greater than 15,000 square miles. A qualifying arrival date is a date that begins a migratory child's 36 month of eligibility and is the date that both the qualifying worker and migratory child complete their qualifying moves to be together. A child or worker may have many qualifying moves, but not all qualifying moves lead to a qualifying arrival date. Now that the child's qualifying move has been recorded through the first three questions, the remaining questions in this section document the move that makes the worker a qualifying worker. Question four reads, the worker moved due to economic necessity on, a blank field follows, from a residence in, blank fields follow, to a residence in, blank fields follow, and checkbox A, engaged in new qualifying work soon after the move, followed by instructions to provide a comment if the worker engaged in the work more than 60 days after the move, or checkbox B, actively sought new qualifying work and has a recent history of moves for qualifying work, followed by instructions to provide a comment. Although it seems similar to question one, remember that the purpose of this question is to document the move that makes the worker a qualifying worker. This may be the same move or a different move than what is documented in question one. It is the responsibility of the recruiter to verify that all moves described on the COE were made due to economic necessity. The worker moved because they could not afford to stay in their current location. The worker move date is the date that established the individual listed in 2B as a migratory worker. Record the date the worker moved to engage in migratory work. From a residence in refers to the location of the migratory worker's last place of residency immediately prior to the qualifying move where they engaged in new qualifying work soon after the move or actively sought new qualifying work and have a history of moves for qualifying work. Provide the school district, city, state abbreviation, and country abbreviation from which the worker traveled. To a residence in refers to the location where the worker resided immediately following the qualifying move. The worker engaged in new qualifying work soon after the move or actively sought new qualifying work and have a recent history of moves for qualifying work. The qualifying move can never be made to a country outside of the United States. Provide the school district, city, and state abbreviation of where the worker traveled to. For moves within a school district of greater than 15,000 square miles, a map with a scale for determining distance must be attached to the COE. The interviewee will verify the route traveled on the map to ensure the validity of the migratory move. 4A should be marked if the individual listed as the worker in question 2B made the qualifying move listed in question four and soon after doing so engaged in new temporary or seasonal employment or personal subsistence in agriculture or fishing. In situations where the worker engages in new qualifying work more than 60 days after the move, a comment is required. Please note that the majority of COEs with 4A marked will not require a comment. If the individual listed as the worker in question 2B made the qualifying move listed in question 4 and was unable to engage in a qualifying activity, 4B should be marked if the worker was able to establish that he or she actively sought new qualifying work and has a recent history of moves for qualifying work. Explain in the comment section how and when the worker actively sought new qualifying work. Also include a comment regarding the worker's recent move history. Question five describes the qualifying work the migratory worker engaged in or actively sought during the qualifying move described in question four. It reads, the qualifying work in a blank field follows was, the form asks that a selection be made in both A and B. 5A offers a choice between seasonal or temporary employment while 5B offers a choice between agricultural and fishing work. There is a checkbox that can be selected if the move was for personal subsistence. 
provide the qualifying work in the blank field. When describing the specific agricultural or fishing work, the recruiter will use an action verb and a noun. Examples include set netting salmon or harvesting berries. If you are completing the COE in the web system, these can be selected from drop down menus. A complete list of qualifying fishing and agricultural terms are provided in the recruiter handbook. Only one qualifying work activity can be listed. When more than one type of qualifying work occurs during the move, record the work that was engaged in for the most part during the move. All other qualifying work activities should be noted in the comment section. Mark the seasonal box under question 5A if the qualifying work occurs only during a certain period of the year because the cycles of nature and therefore may not be continuous year round. Mark the box for temporary under question 5A if the qualifying work lasts for a limited period of time, usually a few months, but not longer than 12 months. Question six of the qualifying moves and work section must be completed if temporary is checked. Mark the agricultural box under 5B if the work involved the production or initial processing of raw agricultural products such as crops, poultry, or livestock, dairy work, as well as the cultivation or harvesting of trees. The work may be performed either for wages or for personal subsistence. Mark the box for fishing work under 5B if the work involves the catching or initial processing of fish or shellfish, or the raising or harvesting of fish or shellfish at fish farms. The work may be performed either for wages or for personal subsistence. Mark the box for personal subsistence if the worker and the worker's family, as a matter of economic necessity, consume as a substantial portion of their food intake, the crops, dairy products, or livestock they produce, or the fish they catch. A comment in the family's own words must be provided in the comment section to document this. If the checkbox for temporary employment was selected in question 5A, then question six must be completed. Question six reads, the work was documented to be temporary employment based on A, worker statement, and in parentheses provide comment, or B, employer statement, and in parentheses provide comment, or C, state documentation for, blank field follows for the name of the employer. Box 6A should be marked if the temporary employment was based on a statement made by the worker or the worker's family. Provide the worker's statement in the comment section of the COE. Box 6B should be marked if the temporary employment was based on a statement obtained from the employer. Provide the employer's statement in the comment section. Box 6C should be marked upon verification that the state has current documentation to support that the work being done is temporary employment for this particular employer. Provide the name of the employer, business, or corporation where the worker engaged in qualifying work in the blank field. In this sample COE, the children and a parent slash guardian went from their home in Wasilla and crossed school district boundaries to Dillingham on 7520. While in Dillingham, the parent slash guardian engaged in seasonal gill netting for salmon. The fishing was done for personal subsistence. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the additional qualifying move section. The additional qualifying move section documents any additional qualifying moves the children made within the previous 12 months as, with, or to join a migratory worker. The additional qualifying moves listed in this box along with the moves established in the qualifying moves and work section help to document a pattern of mobility. List the dates of the other qualifying moves within the past year on the lines provided. The additional qualifying moves should be listed in descending chronological order, with the most recent moves at the top of the list and the oldest moves at the bottom of the list. If there are more additional qualifying moves than fit in the lines provided, please record these additional qualifying moves in the comments section. If an additional qualifying move is at all different than the qualifying move listed in the qualifying moves in work section, a comment should be provided. Comments should indicate differences in location, activity, catch, crop, livestock, and migratory work. If all eligibility information is exactly the same as the qualifying move, then no additional comments are required. Please note 
If the migratory worker made additional qualifying moves separately from the children to engage in new qualifying work to establish them as a migratory worker, this information will be documented solely in the comment section, not as part of the additional qualifying move section. In the sample COE, the children did not make any additional qualifying moves, so this section is blank. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the comments section. The comments section of the COE allows the recruiter to provide required comments as well as any additional information or details that clarify the reasons for the recruiter's preliminary eligibility determination. Comments must be completed with the recruiter's initials and date to reflect when they were added to the COE. Upon selecting certain items from the qualifying moves and work section, a recruiter must provide required comments. These are for questions 2BI, 4A, 4B, 5, 6A, or 6B, if applicable. If 2BI was completed in the qualifying moves and work section because the children and the worker moved separately, record the reason why the children moved to join or proceed the worker. If 4A was completed, include a comment only if the worker engaged in new qualifying work more than 60 days after the qualifying move. Explain why the worker is determined to be a migratory worker based on his or her engagement in new qualifying work more than 60 days after the qualifying move. If 4B was completed because the worker did not engage in new qualifying work soon after the move, provide a comment that documents that the worker actively sought new qualifying work and that the worker has a recent history of moves for qualifying work. If the qualifying work was for personal subsistence, provide a personal subsistence statement describing how the worker and the worker's family as a matter of economic necessity, consume as a substantial portion of their food intake, the crops, dairy products, or livestock they produce, or the fish they catch. If the qualifying work was temporary and either 6A or 6B was checked in the qualifying moves and work section, record the information provided by the worker or employer regarding how long they expect the employment to last. The comment should adequately document how the recruiter came to the preliminary eligibility decision. Some examples of other instances that would require comment to be added to the comment section are, the children's additional qualifying moves are different than the qualifying moves and work section. The worker had additional qualifying moves, agricultural moves, a child moved as the worker, the qualifying move was longer than 30 days, a child is 20 years of age or older with an active IEP. The qualifying worker is not in the child's primary household. The migratory worker had a different residency date than the children. A qualifying move did not cross school district boundaries. A child had multiple mill names that did not fit into the child data section of the COE. There were multiple migratory workers. A child is not attending public school operated by the recruiting district. The children made a permanent move to the recruiter's district and the qualifying work was pole fishing. More information on additional required comments can be found in the recruiter handbook. As previously discussed, various situations require additional comments. Writing clear and detailed comments lets an independent party who has no prior knowledge of the eligibility determination understand the recruiter's reasoning for determining that the child may be eligible. If the basis of the initial eligibility decision would not be obvious to an independent third-party reviewer, the recruiter should add additional clarifying information to the comment section. In this sample COE, the qualifying work was done for personal subsistence. Therefore, the recruiter obtained a personal subsistence statement from the family. The statement described how the personal subsistence is an economic need and how the fish is a substantial portion of the family's food intake. The recruiter then initialed and dated their comment. The next section of the COE we will discuss is the interviewee signature. In this section of the COE, the interviewee signs and dates the COE. The interviewee must also write his or her relationship to the child. By signing the COE, the interviewee agrees to the following statement. 
I understand the purpose of this form is to help the state determine if the children or youth listed on this form is or are eligible for the Title I Part C Migrant Education Program. To the best of my knowledge, all the information I provided to the interviewer is true. This signature is required for a child to be enrolled in the Migrant Education Program. It is required on all COEs. Signatures do not have to be original. Signed COEs can be faxed or scanned as long as the quality of the signatures on the COE are clear. The person who signs a COE must be the source of information contained in the document and should verify any information provided by another source. After the interviewee reviews the COE and certifies it for accuracy, he or she signs indicating all the information is true to the best of his or her knowledge. Interviewees certify the truth of economic necessity by signing the COE. Without this verification, the child will not be enrolled into the migrant education program. Furthermore, their signature on the COE also certifies that they are willing to talk to the migrant education office should they be contacted. The interviewee should always sign and verify information on the COE before the interviewer and designated SCA reviewer sign. In this sample COE, Mother Leah Jackson signed on September 1st, 2020. By signing the COE, Leah certified that to the best of her knowledge, all the information she provided to the interviewer is true. Additionally, by signing the COE, Leah is indicating that she is willing to talk to the Migrant Education Office should she be contacted. The final section of the COE we will discuss is the Eligibility Data Certification section. In this section, the interviewer and designated SCA reviewer sign and date the COE. By signing the COE, they agree to the following statement. I certify that based on the information provided to me, which in all relevant aspects is reflected above, I am satisfied that these children are migratory children as defined in 20 USC 6399 and implementing regulations, and thus eligible as such for MEP services. I hereby certify that, to the best of my knowledge, the information is true, reliable, and valid, and I understand that any false statement provided herein that I have made is subject to fine or imprisonment pursuant to 18 USC 1001. After completing the interview and entering all necessary information on the COE, the interviewer should review the COE for completeness and accuracy. The interviewer's signature is required on all COEs. The interviewee should always sign and verify information on the COE before the interviewer and designated SEA reviewer sign. There will be situations where the interviewer is unable to sign the same day as the interview because the interviewee has not yet signed the COE. In this case, the interviewer should submit the COE to the interviewee to sign first. Then it should be signed and dated by the interviewer when the COE is returned. By signing the COE, the interviewer does not guarantee eligibility. A final determination will be made by the Migrant Education Office. Recruiters cannot interview or sign for their own family. At least one designated SEA reviewer must check each completed COE to ensure that the written documentation is sufficient and that based on the recorded data, the children on the form are eligible for MEP services. The designated SEA reviewer signature is required on all COEs. The interviewee and interviewer must sign the COE before the designated SEA reviewer signs. By signing the COE, the designated SEA reviewer does not guarantee eligibility. A final determination will be made by the Migrant Education Office. In this sample COE, Chris Mariano signed and dated the COE as the interviewer on September 1st, 2020. This signature occurred after Chris reviewed the COE for accuracy and after she obtained the interviewee's signature. After Chris signed, Janessa Loera reviewed the COE for accuracy and signed as the designated SE reviewer on September 2nd, 2020. By signing the COE, Chris and Janessa certified that, to the best of their knowledge, all the information on the COE is true, reliable, and valid. Let's review the sample COE again. The interviewer, Chris Mariano, was a recruiter for the Matsu School District for the 2020-2021 school year. Chris interviewed Leah Jackson about her family's recent fishing move. 
There are two children in this sample COE, and they are listed from youngest to oldest. Putting both children on the same COE means that they made the same qualifying move with the same migratory worker. Jason John Jackson Jr.'s parent confirmed he was born on 7-22-18. Jason is not yet enrolled in school. Jane Marie Jackson's parent confirmed that she was born on 4-25-10. Jane's first day of school after her most recent qualifying move was 8-13-20. She is in fifth grade. Neither child was part of a multiple birth and both children are Alaska Native. There are two individuals listed as the children's parents in the primary household. Their physical and mailing addresses are provided as well as a phone number and email address. The children and a parent slash guardian went from their home in Wasilla and crossed school district boundaries to Dillingham on 7520. While in Dillingham, the parent slash guardian engaged in seasonal gill netting for salmon. The fishing was done for personal subsistence. The residency date is 7-12-20, or the date the children established or reestablished residency in the school district. The children did not make any additional qualifying moves. The qualifying work was done for personal subsistence. Therefore, the recruiter obtained a personal subsistence statement from the family. The statement described how the personal subsistence is an economic need and how the fish is a substantial portion of the family's food intake. The recruiter then initialed and dated their comment. Mother Leah Jackson signed on September 1st, 2020. By signing the COE, Leah certified that to the best of her knowledge, all the information she provided to the interviewer is true. Additionally, by signing the COE, Leah is indicating that she is willing to talk to the Migrant Education Office should she be contacted. Chris Mariano signed and dated the COE as the interviewer on September 1st, 2020. This signature occurred after Chris reviewed the COE for accuracy and after she obtained the interviewee's signature. After Chris signed, Janessa Loera reviewed the COE for accuracy and signed as the designated SE reviewer on September 2nd, 2020. By signing the COE, Chris and Janessa certified that, to the best of their knowledge, all the information on the COE is true, reliable, and valid. Thank you for the work you do to support Alaska's migratory children and youth. For more information and resources about the Alaska Migrant Education Program, visit our webpage at education.alaska.gov ESEA slash title one dash C. And remember, you can always find detailed information in our manual. You can connect with the Alaska Department of Education and Early Development through our website and on social media at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, YouTube, and Vimeo.